Welcome to The Binding of Isaac Explained, Episode 3, Pathfinding. Ah, oh, The Binding of Isaac. I was so proud at the time that I made my own pathfinding algorithm. Ah, what a brilliant solution. It's only severely underperforming, but it doesn't matter conveniently, because the rooms in Binding of Isaac are so small that the unoptimized pathfinding algorithm wouldn't actually have a chance to lag all that much. And uh, I took another shortcut to optimize it that I'll mention later. So the enemies clearly need pathfinding in the Binding of Isaac because they would be quite easily outsmarted. You could just go behind a wall and then the little zombies wouldn't be able to reach you. You could kill them so easily. So it was a very vital feature to have. So how does it work? Well, I gotta say, this is probably the most complicated mechanic I'm going to be discussing in this series, but I think I'm going to explain it simple enough so it won't be a problem. Okay, so first of all, we're going to copy the grid of the level, which is an array with numbers in it. So it has 0 for no wall and 1 for wall. Simple enough. And each enemy copies this for itself and saves it. So now what we do is we run an algorithm that is very similar to a paint can in Photoshop or in Paint. So basically we take the target position, which is the position where the player is in this case, and we, we set that number to 100, because that's where it is, that's where we start. And then each time we, we run the algorithm, we, we take the four neighboring blocks and we, we set them to one number lower. That's it. That is if they haven't been touched already by, by this algorithm. So we, we start out 99, 98. Each iteration we get one lower. And eventually we'll have filled out the entire area that's reachable from that position. So it behaves like a paint bucket. It goes around the walls, but if it's enclosed by walls, it'll just go to the walls and stop there. Okay, so what we have now is an area that's reachable from the target position. And the further away from the target position it is, the lower the number is. So you wonder what will happen if it runs to zero? Well, that, that's where the algorithm would stop, because it's programmed that way. I guess you could start with an infinitely high number, or you could even count upwards. That might make it more convenient. But essentially, I made it so that if you got that far away from it, which it wouldn't even be possible, it would stop, but whatever. That's how I did it, I guess, just so that there is no possibility for an infinite loop. So now we've generated the data that it needs to, to move to the target location. And it can do that by looking at its feet. The little zombie looks. Okay, what number am I on? Zero. That means it didn't reach me. That means that the player is enclosed by walls. Good to know. I guess he must have acquired flight. But in, in the case that it's not zero, which is the most likely case, we will see... Oh, I guess we're at 50. That means we're 50 blocks away. Now we look at the 8 blocks that surround the zombie. And then we see, oh, there's 51, there's 49. 51's the highest one, so that's where we go. And we play a game of hot and cold. And the, the breadcrumbs that, that have increasingly high numbers lead us to the target location. And that's pathfinding. Well, it's a pretty poorly optimized version of pathfinding, but it works. I mean, unless you're in an open area and then... It would take exponentially longer the larger the area is, and that's a problem. And and a common solution to that problem would be a commonly known algorithm called A star, where you basically do a very similar thing. You fill out the area with numbers, but you fill them out in a smart way. So basically you could imagine it's like you pour the paint bucket, but the paint has a gravity and it gravitates towards, well, the target area. So. Essentially, we, we spread out like we did, but every time we spread out, we, we, we only expand on the numbers that are closer to the target until we run into a dead end. And then we, I mean, essentially, if you're stuck in a, in a, in a finite space and the, the target is not there, then you would still end up splashing everything with color. It, it, look, it looks straight for the, the fastest way, and it's probably going to find the fastest way. Okay, so how it does that is, originally it goes in a straight line till it reaches the target. If there's something in the way, then it spreads out from there, and it still has the capability of running through every single one of the grid, but ideally it would only, well, 
you will run around the wall and then straight towards the target. Well, my algorithm wouldn't be doing that. My algorithm would just go literally everywhere. But there isn't much to go in Isaac. The room's fairly small, so it didn't make much difference here. Now, obviously, using a star would be a lot more complicated if you write it yourself. I don't know if you can find a pre-written version of it. But essentially, you have to save more than one number in each grid because you have... You have the number of how far it is away from the target, and then you have the number of how efficient the path is, meaning how close it is to a straight line, and then you have the number of where the path came from originally, because in this case it's important, because you, you want to override it for if it's come from an inefficient path. I've never really used A star, but you should look up how it's done, because it's a pretty interesting way of doing it, and clearly the most optimized way. <laughs> Okay, so how do we translate this kind of stuff into gameplay? I mean, you could just put it in as it is, but there's several downsides to that. Well, first of all, it's not super responsive because it's in a grid, so it wouldn't know the exact way to go. Because if you're like two or three blocks apart, it's not going to find the fastest way. It's going to walk in a curve. So what I like to do is whenever the the enemy actually sees the player, it just doesn't even do the pathfinding. If it sees the player, just go in a straight line. If you don't see the player, then you do the pathfinding. And a way to optimize it that I found was to only calculate this ca this type of stuff every 20 frames, I guess. That, that's... Oh god, we had a frame rate of 30 back then. That's terrible, isn't it? Oh god. So I guess it's like a bit more than once a second. So that's how often it would recalculate the path. Of course, when the enemy first spawns, it also calculates the path right away, so it's not going to wait for like a whole second before it gets going. I think nowadays most people just recalculate it every frame, but it's really not needed. If you just have the grid, you can keep the grid for, for like half a second. It's not going to change that much. And if you see the player, then you're already going in a straight line, so you don't need it to be that accurate. Okay, so another thing I did was to make it so that enemies would fill themselves in on the grid. But they wouldn't be permanent, uh, they wouldn't be absolute, they wouldn't be like a wall, they would only be a, a roadblock. So whenever it's going over an enemy, I guess we, we just reduce the number more than if it would go around the enemy. So that would result in the enemies trying to get out of each other's way if they can. They will only go through if they have no other choice. So if, if an enemy is blocking a path, they will prefer to go the other path, effectively cutting you off. I'm sure you've noticed that in the game, that the enemies try to surround you if they can. If there's tight corridors, that is. That's a Pac-Man scenario. <laughs> So what other things are there in play? Well, the enemies also try to get away from each other a little bit, so they're not completely in a clump. But I think zombies and stuff still do it a lot, but, but things like flies especially try to gravitate away from each other. I don't know if I, if I added that, that desire to be further away from each other to the zombies as well, but the flies definitely have it. Well, there you go. Now you know about pathfinding. Or at least about the pathfinding that enemies do that don't have the luxury of being able to fly over walls. Or to just stay in place until you're there and then shoot you. <laughs> so about a third of the enemies use this code. And they probably add the most interesting scenarios to the game. I hope. <laughs> Unless you think a swarm of flies is the most interesting scenario. <laughs> Duke fly, here we go. Anyways, the next episode will be about movement in general. Which I guess I should have covered already. I guess basically it's like the second part of the physics episode. So look forward to that. And do leave a comment. I do enjoy those comments very much. <laughs> I'm not like a big YouTuber who gets millions of them. So I usually still read them all. Your time writing comments is best spent in this channel than in any other channel. 